Welcome to the Redux channel. We get many questions about the installation of the L600 scissor lift. Is it difficult to assemble and set up? In my opinion, it's not. And in this video, using this already assembled lift as an example, I'll show you a concise method for its assembly and calibration. After unpacking the lift and performing a preliminary platform layout, the first step is to raise the platforms to one of the initial safety latches. It doesn't have to be perfectly level at this point. The key is to gain access to the hydraulic, electrical, and pneumatic lines. You can do this with a shop crane or, if available, a forklift. We begin by connecting the hydraulic lines. For this, it's best to check the user manual. You'll need to fasten three T's and three hydraulic lines that lead to the valves in the control box. For easier identification, they have color-coded zip ties attached. In short, on the main cylinder, the one with two hydraulic lines connected, locate the line that's connected to the middle of the cylinder at the bottom. Connect this line to the corresponding line on the second platform by attaching them to a T fitting. Then, connect the long hose to this T. The other end of this hose should be connected to the black valve in the control box. Next, take another hose from the platform. This is the second hose from the main cylinder. Connect it at a T with the hose exiting the auxiliary cylinder on the second platform. The auxiliary cylinder is the one with a single hydraulic line connected. Attach a long hose to this T and plug it into the middle valve in the control box. We're left with the final circuit. This one is straightforward. Connect the hose from the auxiliary cylinder at a T with the last hose exiting the main cylinder on the second platform. Take the long hose and connect it to the last valve in the control box. Next, we'll tackle the pneumatic system. The thinner hose included in the set goes to the safety latches. Connect it to the latch cylinder, which is located centrally on both platforms. The other end connects to the pneumatic solenoid valve in the control box. Then, for the thicker pneumatic hoses, connect them to the auxiliary cylinders. Unscrew the nut, place it onto the pneumatic hose, push the hose onto the fitting, and tighten the nut. Repeat this process on the other side. Both of these hoses should then be inserted into the tank's breather in the control box. At this point, you can secure the hoses to the cylinders with zip ties to prevent them from getting pinched. Now it's time for the electrical connections. Two cables emerge from the platform, route them to the control box, connect them according to their markings. The first cable has markings 102 and 111. Find cable 102 on the terminal strip and connect it to the corresponding point on the other side. Do the same with cable 111, locate the cable marked 111 and plug it in on the other side. The second cable has three wires, 109, 125 and 127. Connect them as follows. Find 109 and connect it to the other side. Then connect 125. and finally 127. If the markings happen to rub off, remember that blue is 109, brown is 125, and yellow is 127. Next, we need to connect the power supply cable. Our lift is the 400 volts version, so you'll connect the protective earth PE conductor and the three phases, L1, L2, and L3. If you have a 230 volt lift, you'll connect the protective earth, phase, and neutral conductors instead. The final stage of assembly is filling with hydraulic oil. When ordering, keep in mind that the lift requires as much as 16 liters of oil. We are now ready for the initial startup. Open all valves and press the up button for one or two seconds. If you have the 400 volts model, you need to check if the pump is rotating in the correct direction. The easiest way to do this is to close all valves and press the up button. 
If you hear a distinctive squeal, it means the pump is operating in the correct direction. If you only hear the motor spinning, you'll need to power off the lift, disconnect it from the mains and swap two phases. Once that's done, reconnect the lift and briefly press the up button again. If you hear the squeal, that's a good sign. Now, open all valves and hold the up button until the lift begins to rise. You can raise it almost to its maximum height right away. Next, approach the lift and unscrew the lower limit switch from its base. Once it's detached, press the up button again to allow the cylinders to fully prime with oil. Hold it for a few seconds, then lower the lift all the way down. Be careful not to pinch the limit switch during this process. Once the lift is fully lowered, check the hydraulic oil level and top it up if necessary. You'll need to wait a moment for the oil to settle as it's currently mixed with air. How can you tell? If you look into the filler opening, the oil should be clean and clear. If it appears milky or white, it means it's heavily aerated and you need to wait for it to settle. At this stage, the platforms might operate unevenly. This is normal during this phase of assembly. We repeat this raising and lowering procedure a few more times, each time ensuring that the oil is clear before raising the lift and that we don't damage the limit switch while lowering it. While doing so, we also check all connections for any leaks. Once the lift is fully bled of air, all that's left is to lower the platforms completely and close the two valves, the ones you turn 90 degrees. Now, when you press the up button, the lift should rise smoothly. Raise it up and install the limit switch. We're now left with adjusting the lowering speed and the time relay. The lowering speed is adjusted using the throttle valve located in the control box next to the pump. It's best to perform this adjustment once you have a vehicle on the lift. The time relay should be set to approximately 1.5 to 2 seconds. This is the optimal setting. All that remains is to precisely set up the lift to its dimensions, drill holes for the anchors, route the cables, and finally, install the covers and ramps. After everything is complete, simply tidy up your tools and the lift is ready for safe operation. For more videos like this, visit our channel. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.